Hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to show the uh, the purpose, the reason why we went ahead and had an observatory installed on top of the garage. And basically it goes back to uh, obstacles, time constraints, trees getting taller in the backyard. I used to set up an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain in the driveway getting a full view of the southern and western skies and then I picked up a CPC 1100 and to set up uh, blinders to knock out any spurious light wind, the telescope, electric cords, things like that. It would take about 40 minutes and so uh, we were able to fortunately increase the height of the garage and put the observatory on a third level and Today I'm going to try to explain everything that was necessary and everything that we did in order to make this happen. In the garage, uh, right off the bat, we needed to beef up the flooring. The joists that are there are 2 inches by 8 inches, and by going ahead and putting 4 by 12 glue lamps up and down, eight feet apart, we were able to go ahead and install a good solid baseline for carrying the load straight up three levels. As you can see, there is one beam that goes across the garage over the doors. Those go down to foundation in the corners, in the center, and then the other two beams go from the opening of the garage doors to the back wall where again they go down to foundation and in turn they carry the load and now I have full support going up not just one but two levels and that will be explained more as we get upstairs uh, before the flooring on the second floor was installed permanently I cross braced everything up in here on the 2x8s just to keep that level as secure as possible to keep it from any shimmy whatsoever. I just tried to stop and support everything as much as I could prior to getting up to the third level. You're going to see some shaking and I apologize for that. To be able to get up the stairs from the gap between these two eight foot beams, the risers on the step are higher than normal in order to be able to not hit your head, bring four by eight sheets of anything upstairs and to be able to get it in between these two beams. So it's a little bit higher than normal but it works and it works very very well. The second level primarily is for storage, household storage. We used to have attic stairs and it was crawl space up here. Now with this, we can store deck, patio furniture, and in turn, everything is easy to get to, easy to access. I'm just showing a little bit and all the lights are turned on. I wanted everyone to see exactly how it looks. If we come back here, Again, this section carries the load-bearing walls eight feet on that back and where the door is. This is the control room. I keep a small space heater in here. This room is fully insulated. R13 in the walls, the flooring, and I put R30 in the ceiling in order to restrict any of the heat coming from here to get into the observatory. The small radiant heater is good enough to go ahead and keep this room very comfortable when the door is closed, even when it's 10 or 15 degrees. It didn't really get that cold this past winter, but it'll do the job. Before we go upstairs, I want to be able to just show a little bit more of the space involved with the added storage capabilities. Shelving in between all the windows. Windows were put in to mimic the windows outside along with offer 
cross ventilation to keep everything nice and comfortable in this area. This is not heated, it's not air conditioned, it's just storage. Christmas trees and decorations, items like that. Additional items back in here, this small space from where the control room and the observatory, there's a gap between the outside wall, folding tables, folding chairs, house fans, items like that are located in that facility. Up in here, you can't see it that well, but where the 2x8 joists going from the second to the third level, I added additional 2x8s. You can probably see the better on the other side. The additional 2x8s were added in order to provide that much more support to the floor of the observatory along with blocking on both sides just to minimize any shifting whatsoever because I do not have any kind of pipe or a post or anything like that. I just I couldn't run that down 20 feet. So, and then again to get upstairs as with any other construction to pass electric I had to have three-way switches with lights at the top of both stairways so this way the lights could be turned on and off at both ends of the stairs. This whole section here is insulated in order to keep the sun from turning it into an oven and it does make a difference. The walls of the observatory are insulated in order to do the same thing. I can open up the dome when it's warm out and it will allow for the warm air to escape very easily. But what the walls and the insulation on the walls provide is the sun beating on the sides front and back during the day. It doesn't make it any warmer than necessary. The telescope is always here. Um, I plug it in when necessary. I'm not plugged in when it's not in use. I have white light, one white light, and two red lights, both separate switches. So this way, if I need any additional lighting, it's just the red lights that get turned on. There's a junction box here as well as in the control room that will allow for cabling to go back and forth between the two to control anything I need to. A uh, laptop most of the time will sit in here with this movable cart. I can go ahead and plug right into the, compu uh, the computer there into the telescope using items like Stellarium, using Next Image 5 to take pictures of planets, the moon, items like that. I want to be able to give everybody a, an opportunity to see. This is approximately 8 feet by 8 feet outer diameter. So it's about 7.5 feet by 7.5 feet inside. The dome itself is an Explorer dome. There's no mechanicals on it. For me to open up the shutter, it's not a problem. I just use the lines right here. Two lines, one opens, the other one closes. I use this ladder to be able to get up and open up the lower shutter, which is in its open position right now. Everything is a little higher than normal because I have a six foot door coming in. I didn't want to have a 48 inch door to come in. I didn't want to have to bend over all the time and hit my head and have other people hit their head on these little sections in the corners where it supports the dome. For me to go ahead and move the dome is as simple as that. And that's how easy it moves. It's like a lazy Susan. I can't ask for anything better than this. It's easy. It's a great escape. It's quiet. I don't have to worry about spurious light. If it's windy outside with the dome, I don't feel the wind. I can close the shutter to just allow for 
the necessary viewing. The carpet is put down. One, just to be more comfortable on my feet and easier to clean up. But two, in case I drop an eyepiece, it's not padded, but it'll help absorb maybe any impact versus hitting a, a wood floor. When I'm taking images, I do have to sit in that chair because if I'm moving around here where the flooring underneath the suppression pads it will shake the next image 5 images. The next image 5 I find is equivalent to about a 5 millimeter eyepiece. So that's quite a bit of magnification. I'm over 500 magnification. So any little jostle has the camera going all over the place. So I set it up, I sit on the stool, the laptop is on the, the work table, and it's perfectly comfortable, nice and stable. I just have to be careful how not to move. Again, steps going down, there's a little bit of storage up here. In this section, some of my kids' things from 20, 30 years ago. Not much. I try to keep all the items that we have stored on shelves easy to get to. I'm just too old to be able to rush up, run, run up there and climb around on ceilings on my hands and feet anymore. And again, in the control room, the lights are on a dimmer switch. It's well insulated. It's comfortable. I could do reviewing anything I need to. All my outlets are on 20 amp circuits. I have three 20 amp circuits coming up here. One of them controls some of the lights here and over on the other side and it comes out to this outlet on the wall. The other one starts here with the GF, GFI circuits with the outlets right here from the initial one. It will go up and over into the control room and then there's another main outlet back here. The observatory is on its own 20 amp circuit. More than enough power. Three separate 20 amp circuits. More than enough power to be able to support this entire area. And that is it. Hopefully I can go ahead and start putting additional better videos together to explain some of the things that I've done in more detail and what are the, some of the plans that I'm doing in the future. And I want to thank you for your time and patience.